Welcome back to another episode on the Concrete Chief, and we are stood behind the T72, which we will do some more videos of when we get a minute, but now you have to be patient. In the last video, we were battling with the wiring in the back that got damaged when they knocked all the concrete out. We have replaced that, but I couldn't find the gearbox controller unit that sits in the back corner that connects the whole electrics to the gearbox. But I found that yesterday, fitted that, and I'll show you some of what I did yesterday. And we have now got gears. So the next thing I'm going to do is fit the sump, because we've got to fit the sump first before we can put the main engine in. So we're just going to put the top cover, the dipstick basically, on there. We're going to fit that in, and then hopefully today we may even try and fit the actual engine. And if anyone wondering why Seb is looking like that, <laughs> this is the extremes we go to to stop roller shutter noise. So. And you'll still complain you can't hear us. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we can't hear you. Can I move now? Yeah, you can. So I found my controller box for the gearbox, also the lighting. A clever friend of mine told me that that cable is actually for service lighting. And this one here, the armor cable, is for the gearbox controls. Anyway, that's plugged in. These are then wires, then go off into the gearbox. And now that's on, I can go put power on again and see if I press the gears to see if it's selecting any. Fingers crossed. It'd be a miracle if it works. Right, now we've got the gearbox controller bolted on. I'm going to get back inside and let's see what happens now. See if we've got any gears. Fingers crossed. People are asking about the jump pack again. It's that make. Got it on eBay. £190. Good thing. Okay, right. Isolator on. Jump pack on. Uh, so we have a light on. And did the gearbox thing move? No. So the coolant's moving. The coolant's moving. That's like it's earthing out. Gun indicator. All of that's happening before the ignition's on, which doesn't seem right. Now if I turn the ignition on, we have another light there. But we got no, no gears, so there's something wrong. And we seem to have a light on all the time, which suggests a, a short, and that's definitely suggesting a short. That's that isolator. But until I turn the jump pack off, and um, that's just gently on. Yeah, I think we have a short. So the most likely place that we could have a problem or a short would be in this box that I already know isn't brilliant. Because um, obviously it's been covered in water all its life. So it's a big job. I'm going to do all the connectors, making a note of where they all come from, and replace this box because I actually have a couple of spares. So then we can see if it's salvageable. But I'm going to change change that out because there's a lot going through that, and that could just be a quick fix. After a little bit of swearing, I replaced the main switchboard. That's the one that I've took out, and I'm pretty sure it's a good one. No, that's the one I've replaced. That's a good one. The one I've took out is that. We'll open that up and have a look in a minute, but let's see now if anything different happens or if we've made it worse. Okay, we're back inside. Let's turn the isolator on. I mean, the, the jump pack. Right, so... That isn't going like it was. No, that's moving. All right, now let's turn the isolator on down here. Coolant still thingy bobbing, but now that's actually not coming on without the isolator. No ignition. Lights seem brighter. Definitely brighter, but Dead on the uh, on the gears. Oh, mind you, that plug doesn't feel a lot of good. What have we got here? That plug goes. It seems to be in a funny place. It could be the gear. Hmm. The caps come off. 
O. Well, if I had to guess, the next thing that it's probably likely to be is the gear change pedal, because that's obviously been sat in water, and I do have another spare, so I'm gonna try and take that off, although one of the cables looks badly corroded. So we'll see how that goes. We'll change that, fingers crossed, that mate fixes it. Right, well, that ain't good. That's gearbox controller, and that's the main plug. And it gets worse because that plug, which is there, is all buggered up in there, and that that plug runs all the way, that whole cable, all the way around and out the back there. And I don't have a spare. Not good. Okay, I didn't want to be beaten. So what I've done, I've gone and found my other gear change, gear change pedal unit thing, that. And I found a cable, much like the one that I used in the other video. And I've gone from that, and I've just ran it all the way to the back and into that junction box that I've just changed. Now, the only thing that could be wrong is the way them cables connected could be different to the one that, the genuine one. But the plug fitted, it was worth a chance. Let's see what happens. Oh my God, I've done it. <laughs> We've got gears. Let's try going up one. Yes, two. Oh my God, I can't believe it. We've actually got a working gearbox. Now for reverse, you should press a button up there and then down. Even that's working. I can't believe it. I know it's hard to see. Let me move this torch. Get rid of the damn thing. That's got rid of the torch. Someone's gonna have right good fun uh, taking them off, aren't they? <laughs> Nothing but the best. Good job that whoever I bought this off took all the bolts out of that, the special counter suck headed bolts, and then lost them. When you take stuff to bits, put the bolts back in the holes. It's not, not difficult. It's not difficult. It saves a lot of time. I'll put my safety glasses back on. It was brand new oil, and we only ran the engine up once. But I'm not taking any chances. I'm glad I didn't, because it looked like more water in the bottom of that. It also sounded like a bolt fell out, didn't it? Well, wasn't that much oil in there, was it? What do you mean? <laughs> we don't know yet. We then decided we'd pull the Chieftain forward just so it was on slightly more level ground, ready for when we lift the engine in. So we needed the Rio to do a little bit of winching. Well, with that not done and the Chieftain not level, we thought we'd carry on without moving it. I felt the Foden was needed for lifting the engine in, as it's got the electric remote. While fitting the sump, we had a bit of a drum roll.
gonna absolutely chuck it down tomorrow. So I've got everything in place, the engine, everything we want. So if it doesn't, I can crack on. But if it does, at least everything's here for when it finally does dry out and I can put it all together and see if we can make it run for the first time ever. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again.